think gangs are uh, the scourge of uh, our society. They are a cancer, and unless we actually cut the cancer out, they will continue spreading. Here in West Australia, the government is taking a tough stand against organised criminal gangs. They're cracking down hard on the bikies. The message is quite clear. You deal in drugs of death and you lose everything. Doesn't matter whether you inherit it, you worked for it, you deal in drugs and you are going to lose everything. Perth may look a bright and shiny modern city, but there's a tough underbelly. Bikey gangs like the Gypsy Jokers, the Coffin Cheaters, God's Garbage and Club Deros have given West Australia a reputation for being the Wild West. They're known for drug dealing, bashings, bombings and drive-by shootings. They are, say the police, organised crime, the new Mafia. They have far surpassed what the Mafia was in the, in the early 70s. Superintendent Fred Gear of West Australian Police Intelligence is something of an expert on bikey gangs. There is no doubt about it that they are heavily involved in the drug scene. Perhaps some of the older members in, uh, of the 70s that uh, used to say, look, we don't use hard drugs, we're against uh, distribution of hard drugs, those days are gone. The young entrepreneurial outlaw motorcycle gang members that are coming through the ranks today are purely interested in making money. This is what can happen when you cross them. Terrorism, assassination or cold-blooded murder. Two men, Lou Lewis, a bookmaker, and former CIB chief Don Hancock were murdered by a car bomb planted under the driver's seat of this car. The Gypsy Jokers Not believed Hancock had shot dead one of their members Not outside his outback man. pub and pursued the retired policeman for a year with a campaign of threats and bombings. They finally got him in this quiet suburban street as he was being dropped off after a day at the races. His wife Elizabeth Hancock was returning home after dropping off a couple of videos. I saw Irene standing up there, standing out in the street. So she said to me, it's a bomb. She said, she said Lou's dead. I could see him on the side of the road. And um, we didn't know where Don was. I reckon they didn't know where he was. He'd actually been blown out of the car into a pool area. So... You know, what is the difference between them and the Al-Qaeda? I don't see any difference between a terrorist group and these outlaw motorcycle gangs or these gangs that are making these sort of drugs. West Australia's politicians cracked down and introduced some of the toughest anti-gang legislation in the Western world. First off the rank was the Criminal Confiscation Act which allows police to seize property before any trial. The onus is then on the criminal to prove their assets were gained lawfully. The idea was zero tolerance for gangs and to hit them in the pocket. Civil liberty groups and the WA Law Society called it draconian. It actually reverses the ordinary um, onus of proof. One is presumably, um, or presumed guilty until proved innocent in this, um, this bill. But on the last sitting day of 1999 for the WA Parliament, the Act was hurriedly passed. A brand new police commissioner was charged with implementing the new law. We don't prove that they've obtained it lawfully. We say these are these assets you've got. You now have to prove you've got it lawfully, otherwise the court will confiscate it. Barry Matthews, a former deputy commissioner for the New Zealand police, was fresh off the boat. Uh, it doesn't matter whether the assets were obtained illegally or legally, uh, we can get the, the whole lot of the assets there. So even if a drug dealer has only made, for example, a million dollars, but has um, three other million dollars in terms of wealth, which they might have obtained legally through some sort of business, we have the ability to get the whole four million dollars. Crime pays, at least for the WA government. Detective Superintendent Jim Migro 
is happy to show us the evidence. So this is where you keep the booty? Yeah, this is where we keep quite a bit of the items that we do seize. There's a number of motorbikes here, uh, dragster, a couple of quality motor vehicles, uh, and of course this is how you really hurt these gangs. But it goes deeper than the pocket. Taking a bikey's bike away is akin to rendering him nude. The whole aim of the thing is to take the profit out of the crime if we do that. If they go to jail and they come back out and they've got nothing, we're really achieving something because too many times people go to jail, come back, and they've still got all their uh, riches there to uh, live with. Walk around the confiscated area uh, yeah, and you soon fun. notice there are some very expensive big boys' ours. toys. He won't get this back. No, this is ours. And what will you do with this? Uh, well, eventually it will be sold. And the money goes back. And the money to the state. goes back to the state, uh, and it's then put into a number of crime prevention uh, strategies. So actually, the the villains are paying for crime prevention. So, yeah, so crime does pay. Crime does pay for the government. We've got some more if you judge the, the success of the law by the balance sheet, four. then it's been very it's lucrative both. for the WA government. So not only have you taken away his playthings, you've taken away his livelihood as well. Oh, that's exactly right. Yeah. In the three years the law's been in place, police have seized more than 40 million Aussie dollars worth of asset. Row upon row of luxury cars, trucks and boats, all confiscated from drug dealing gang members. But critics complain it's just another form of revenue gathering for police. We're very clear that um, we've got to have a very strong case. We, we have a procedure in place to make sure that we're on very strong grounds. That, and basically, we just target the, the drug traffickers, quite frankly. Also enforcing the law is a gang response unit, a group of highly trained and heavily armed police. Gangs can barely move now outside their fortified headquarters without being followed by police. There were two police to every bikey on a recent run. You may have tough legislation, but you still have the gangs. You still have the drugs. It certainly has been successful in regards to, to disrupting and to dismantling certain members and certain clubs. We've seen certain chapters that have actually closed down and moved uh, out of Western Australia. We are never going to eradicate. This is all about a, a process of disrupting and continually dismantling it. As far as I'm concerned, they are organised crime on wheels. Nothing more, nothing less. In New Zealand, there are almost as many patched gang members as there are police. Their menace can be summed up in one letter, P. The horror stories are well known. P, the pure form of methamphetamine, has swept through every community and social group in this country, leaving a trail of addiction, violence and nasty, seemingly senseless murders. Police estimate that the gangs are responsible for 90% of the manufacture and distribution of P, making millions from the profits. The fact is they know what they're producing. They know the harm that is coming from producing those, those sort of drugs. They know the harm that's coming out of uh, people using it, the fact that it's increasing the health costs in New Zealand, that it's increasing law enforcement costs, the impact on the community, the fact that they're selling it to the kids on the street. Fred Gear was brought out to New Zealand by the Police Association and was horrified by the damage being wrought by P. He says we need to get tough, follow the WA line of zero tolerance against gangs. I believe New Zealand has got the ideal opportunity to be able to show the rest of the world what can be done and how to eradicate this, not only the P problem, but to be able to dismantle and disrupt the gang problem. It will be controversial. There will be people that will argue the other way. But I'm, I'm a great believer that it's time the good people had the, the more of the say than, than protecting the bad people. I think New Zealand uh, is in the, the box seat one country, one government, one law enforcement agency. I'd love to, to see Australia be in that position. In New Zealand, the Proceeds of Crime Act allows police to confiscate assets only after a trial and only if the Crown can prove they were obtained illegally. 
The ravages of P means the government is coming under increasing pressure to get tougher on the gangs. It's promising new legislation, but whether it will be tough enough remains to be seen. Well, it's, it's not a case of being PC at all, and it's not a case uh, of showing, uh, not showing zero tolerance. Of course we don't tolerate crime, but let's not pretend that the confiscation of assets is the silver bullet. We want not only to take the assets, we want the conviction. Minister of Justice Phil Goff has concerns with the West Australian model. At the moment, Western Australia can pick up the assets without getting the conviction, in fact, they have a settlement where they work it out between the crims and the prosecutors as to how much they'll pass across, but the criminals are still out on the street committing the crime. That's not zero tolerance. So what I want to make sure is that we have a confiscation regime that does not in any way encourage the police to say, that's the route we'll go down, it's easier, and leave the crims on the street to continue pushing the drugs. Obviously, you've got to do both. Why don't you just say, it's a war? We're taking no prisoners. Even in a war, you follow Geneva Conventions. Uh, those conventions are necessary uh, in terms of the battle against crime. Uh, yes, we want the laws and we want the resources to crack down on crime. No, we don't want to have a state that uh, exercises powers that can affect the lives of ordinary New Zealanders and deprive them of the rights and the liberties that they expect. Any court of law still has to prove guilt beyond reasonable doubt. New Zealand's considering introducing its own tough legislation against gangs. What would you, your advice be to New Zealand politicians? Oh, they've just got to be strong and they've got, they've got to bring in legislation to curb these, these people because, you know, that'll just, they just cause terrible uh, havoc over there. The, They'll ruin other people's lives, you know, and other people have got rights. If New Zealand just sits there and does nothing, you will see that the P epidemic will get worse. You will see the commodity change as the people change, but you will never, ever eradicate it. The people today that are millionaires are going to be multi-millionaires. The multi-millionaires are going to be even bigger, greater and more powerful. I think the New Zealand community and society, and particularly Parliament, would have to really ask themselves how serious are they about really denting uh, organised crime and drug trafficking? And I would advocate that they do what Western Australia has said and, and, and take a tough line.